Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Reaper blog. I've seen a lot of confusion recently about terminology for routing, busing, aux tracks, group tracks, folder tracks. For people that are new to Reaper or new to recording in general, some of the terminology you see is a little confusing because sometimes it's a little different for every program that you use. So today I'll try to explain all that kind of stuff. Reaper has one type of track. We just have tracks. It can be audio, it can be MIDI. We can make them into a folder and we can have a track control a VCA. A program like Pro Tools has multiple different types of tracks, mono and stereo tracks, aux tracks, instrument tracks, and each one is used for a very specific purpose. Reaper lets you do any of those things on one type of track and even simultaneously. Let's do kind of a simplified demonstration of what a project would look like. Right click here, insert multiple tracks. I'll just put in six tracks. First one we'll call vocal. We'll have guitar one, guitar two. I'll have a bass track, I'll have a keyboard, a loop, and then a reverb. Let's open up the mixer so we can see this in two different ways. So the audio that would be coming from these tracks these audio files will be playing from here, from the files on the hard drive, through these tracks, and then going out to the master. Right now, nothing is routed except for going to the master. If we look on the I.O. button in Reaper, we see this master send. So there is, by default, a send from the track to the master. The master itself has a send to the hardware interface. So you need this to hear what you're playing. We can disable the master send on a track, and then we won't hear this through the master. A bus is a pathway for the audio to combine with other sources. So in Reaper, we're just making a new track. You can call this Guitars. Put this one right beside it. And the kind of manual way to do this is to make a new send from the Guitar 1 track to the Guitars track and disable the master send. And we go over to our second guitar track, go to Sends, Guitars, Track, and disable the master send. So now these are not going to the master, but they are going through this track. And this one's going to the master. I'm going to explain this again a little bit later on with the drawing to show the, the routing. Uh, it may be a little bit, bit easier, but try to keep up with this. So we've created sends, and sends are a split in the signal. If we wanted the vocal track to send to a reverb, we could add a new send through this window, like I showed before. We could also just drag and drop onto the other track from this middle section of the track. Another thing you can do is drag the routing button over here to here, or from the track control panel view, we can drag and drop onto another track to create the routing to this other track. So the vocal track is splitting the signal. It's going to the master and to the reverb track. Reverb track is then going to the master. In a mix, we have a whole bunch of tracks, and they're all going into the output. So let's do output. Our tracks are over here, like kick, snare, hi-hat. Over here we have bass, and here we have vocal one and vocal two. The bass can go directly to the output. It's just one track. Vocal one and vocal two go into a vocal bus before going to the output. The kick, snare, hi-hat, overhead, room mics, all those go into the drum bus before going to the output. 
So the signals from these individual microphones are combining into stereo track, the drum bus, before going to the stereo output of the system, which is then rendered as your mix or your live playback into your speakers. Individual tracks can go directly to the output uh, without any other routing. And we can also have effects tracks. So let's just say effects track. These go directly to the output, but this isn't a media file playing from the hard drive. It needs to be f fed from something else. So something like the snare drum can send into here before going to the output. So this is a parallel path. Snare is going directly to the output. It's also split going to the reverb or delay and going to the output. And we can share effects from the vocals into the effects track and to the output. So again, it's a parallel path. The signal is split and combined later at the output. Over here, we have our tracks or our audio files as they're playing back. So those are waveforms. Over here, we have our output. It's our speaker. MP3, it's our CD, whatever you want to export your mix as. So audio comes from the WAV file into a track. So this is a track. Then it has effects. And then we have volume control. And then it's routed to the output. You can have tracks without audio coming into it from the track or from itself. So for example, you would use sends to go into a track. Let's just put a straight line to the output. The track by itself has all the same options, but it's going right to the output with nothing coming into it directly. A send can be pre-fader, and let's say we're taking this track, and it goes from here, from this point, down to this track. And it could also be post-fader, which is after this track's volume control. So it goes from here, and this one splits off to this track pre-fader send, any volume changes you make to this, you turn the track all the way down in volume, it's still going to get the original signal level from up to this point into this track. Post-fader send, if you turn down the main volume and send to this track, you will get nothing. You can turn this up, the send also turns up. A folder in Reaper is the same as a bus. It'll be like this. So these are two tracks. Instead of going directly to the output, they're going to combine in the middle and then go to the output. So this is your, your kick, your snare, your hi-hats, your toms, overheads, and room mic for your drum bus. They're all combined into one new track with effects, with pre and post fader sends, with a volume control. The thing is that it's all combining into one track, one new track, and going out. A VCA is kind of a weird thing. So you have a track and it has a volume fader. It's used as a controller for the volume controls on your other tracks. So you assign tracks two and three to VCA one so that this volume fader is controlled by this one. So when this one gets turned down, these tracks also get turned down. The volume is not as loud going to the output. If you turn this up, the inverse happens. VCAs in Reaper do not have effects. So a VCA is just a controller for the volumes. Um, you can do some interesting things with them, but it's not actually routing the audio. And that's not like busing, which is like folder tracks. 
in Reaper. Okay, let's reset these guitar tracks. And now let's use the guitars. Let's just call this guitars bus, so it's a little easier to see. So this one here, this track, we're going to make into a folder by clicking this little plus button. So now all the tracks that are below it are now routed through it before going to the master. Uh, we don't want all of them, we just want the two guitar tracks. So I'm going to click this button again. Now guitar two is also a folder. We're going to click it a second time, and now it's the last track in the folder. So these two tracks go through this track. They're not split. They're going directly into this track, and then they're going to the master. So at this point, we've talked about sends. That's splitting the signal. We've talked about routing or busing. That's changing the path for the signal. Instead of going to the master, we're sending it through another track first. We're routing it into a reverb track. Busing, routing, those are the same things. It's just uh, choosing the path for the signal. A folder track is a bus track, or it is a group track. And the entire signal of these two items, all the effects on this track, the volume, everything, is going through this track before it's continuing to the master or any other routing that we're using. If we mute this track, the two tracks inside will also be muted. Another thing that comes up is VCA tracks. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. And this is a control signal, it's not an audio signal. So we're not routing audio through a VCA, we're using a VCA to control the volumes or panning of any selection of tracks. So I'll just call this VCA1. We want to look at our grouping matrix. Uh, I'm going to show group details. To assign a VCA, click this track, our VCA1 track, twice to make it a master. And then all the other tracks, or any tracks that we want to assign to the VCA to be controlled by the VCA, need to be set as a slave. Uh, for example, we'll choose guitar one. We can click this three times to make it S for slave. We can also right click on here and then see all the various options that we have. So turning down this track controls the input level to this volume fader. So turning this down means that we'll get no sound from these tracks. Even though the faders are up, this fader now modifies the signal that's going into the fader that's prior to going to the bus and then going to the master. Let's look at a real session that's something that's a little more complicated with lots of sends and real audio. As you can see here, I'm using folders for each group of tracks. So uh, these are all the drum tracks. They're going into a drums folder or bus. The signals are summing. Instead of six tracks of drum mics, it's now on one stereo track. One other nice thing that we could do with folders is actually collapse them and hide them. So we can click this a couple times and the tracks basically hide. Click it again, they expand. It's great. So I've got my drum tracks, I've got a bass folder, I have a electric guitars folder, vocals folder, background vocals folder, and then I have four different effects return tracks. So there's no audio on these tracks, they're all coming from the various other tracks in the mix. We look at our mixer. I've made the folder tracks large so that we can see them more easily. We have this option of collapsing the folder tracks to hide them, to hide the individual tracks. You can see there's a lot of guitar tracks. And we can just collapse that once they're kind of submixed uh, into this bus. So it sounds good. We can just control the overall level of these guitars by using this fader. Here we see sends. This one's going to a parallel compression track that's inside the same folder. This one is going to a delay, which is this track over here. Let's look at the guitars. This one's going to reverb and delay. A couple different reverbs. A post fader send 
is the default setting. And that means that this signal comes after the level of the fader. If we turn this track down, we're not going to send any signal to the reverb. We have this up. Our setting is going to be minus 11.47 decibels below the value of this fader. OK? We can make this uh, pre-fader. And that means that the signal is sent at minus 11.47 decibels lower than the recorded signal on the track. I'm going to completely ignore the fader level here. We also have pre-effects, which means it's before the effects chain. That's directly after the recorded signal on the track. All right, guys, I hope this has been helpful. Routing and busing, it's a little confusing to think of it kind of abstractly. Reading about it doesn't really help. Once you start doing it, once you realize how simple it is to just drag and drop to create sends, once you start using folders instead of manually routing everything through other tracks, uh, disabling the master send, those things. Routing audio in Reaper is incredibly simple and intuitive, different from other DAWs because there's unlimited number of tracks, unlimited number of sends. We don't have specific buses that we have to route to. We just choose a track that we want to send it to. It's incredibly flexible that way. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I'd love to help you guys out. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more.